Hi everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm gonna scooch back a little bit. Um, a bit of car chat for you to start with. Quite an exciting day today. So I had a bit of a funny revel... well, no. Something happened yesterday, basically. Um, so lovely Robin, who has been with us for a couple of years now, um, his owner has decided to move him nearer to where she is uh where she lives she's quite a long way away she was commuting commuting a long way on the jet on the motorway and it was an absolute nightmare for her and she'd started making very good progress with him so she made the decision relatively suddenly to move him she was offered something really cool a really cool opportunity with somebody for some flat work training so that is what she has chosen to do now um this has left me essentially with an empty stable at short notice normally i have a notice period on stables and that is being dealt with. But anyway, besides the point, I have an opportunity. I have an empty stable. This means only one thing. So today I have just been and purchased a brand new head collar because I am going to bring Dee Dee in. So Dee Dee is, if you don't know her, she is my foal. Uh, she was orphaned. So I'm actually just sitting editing this video and I need to put in some context because I just say in it that she was orphaned. But she, I had the opportunity to orphan a foal because I lost a foal. Um, my mare Mo lost a foal. And it was very, very hard. And um, I go on to explain more about Dee Dee, but I just want to share some of the moments just after my foal passed when Dee Dee arrived because... They were really special and I don't think I've ever shared this footage and I think it's important for you guys to see it because, well, it means every these horses mean everything to me and I hope that in these clips that you can see that. Um, so my foal passed away from sepsis and Dee Dee arrived and here we go. Here's some clips. Hi guys. Um, this is basically what I do. I cry. Um, but we do have some little positive. This is, this is a little orphan who needed a mum. So she's here. And Mo doesn't like her yet. But we're really trying. And we let them meet a little bit. And she... She's very full of life, this baby, and she really shows me that maybe my baby wasn't so full of life. Don't pull me, little monkey. But she's hungry. And we have to be careful when we let her drink. Because, like I said, Mo doesn't, doesn't like her. You know? Oh. Are you happy to be alive, little baby? <laughs> and that milk just makes you feel so good. <laughs> Daddy. Oh. Yes, At five days old, she arrived here. I will put in some video of that because she was the sweetest little thing. And my lovely, lovely mare, Mo, adopted her. It wasn't a very smooth procedure. Um, it was quite stressful because Mo didn't initially accept her. So we had to use some magical science to help Mo believe that she was her baby. Um, you give them a dose of prostaglandin. Yeah. And it, it, we don't totally know what it does, but the mare becomes sort of sweaty and a bit like she's in labour. And then you introduce the foal at that point, you put the mare's sweat on the foal, you... If you had some of the birth, you would use that too if you had it at the time. We did not. And then 
she accepts the foal. And it was amazing. And it was like this amazing moment where we thought we weren't going to be able to help the mother have a baby. And we didn't know whether the baby was going to be able to have a mother. But it happened. And it was like very emotional and wonderful. And three years later, Dee Dee has had her fair share of problems. She's had a bad injury in the field where she had a cut. She's had her fair share of abscesses. So Mo is a warm blood cross Irish sport horse. And I had bred a foal from her. Unfortunately, the foal was not meant to be and she passed away at 36 hours old. She was septic. Um, she didn't get what she needed from Mo straight away. She was tiny, very weak, not meant to be. I think I've dealt with it in my mind. Probably haven't. Makes me very sad to think about it. But it happened. And it meant that Dee Dee came into my life. And sometimes I think about like what would what would have happened had Mapenzie lived. That was her name. It meant sweetheart in Swahili because she had a little heart on her forehead. I'll put a picture in of her because she must be remembered because she's very special to me. Okay, I'm fine. But Dee Dee is here and Dee Dee has something about her. There's a gratitude in her that's very different. There's a kindness to her, a slowness, a sweetness that she is, she's just wonderful. She's a thoroughbred. She's a fully full thoroughbred um and she was gifted to me and that's not often what happens most of the time the foal is the commodity and the mother goes to the foal to become the foster parent or the adopted parent but in this situation that didn't happen and this isn't normal she was just given to me I literally I didn't pay for her or I paid a pound for her but she was given to me and um She's in my name, passported, you know, the owner. I've never even spoken to the actual owner. Actually, it was done through the stud where she was. Here she is. She was a miracle. She was a gift. And her name is Zawadi, which means gift in Swahili. I've kept this throughout the folds that I've bred. So we had Mapenzi, Sweetheart, Zawadi, Didi, Gift. And then Indi. Her name actually is Upinde, which means rainbow, because she was the baby that was born after the baby died. So it's all a very emotional thing, and I feel very fortunate to have Dee Dee, and she's really special to me, and I'm going to go and bring her in today, and I'm going to have the opportunity to back her. So I'm going to back her now, not right now, but uh, over the next couple of months. So she will... Um, we'll start with the groundwork that I do, which you can learn all about on my online training platform. Here is a link up here somewhere. Um, and so we will teach her about herself first. She will learn about how to be calm and relaxed within herself. She has done some. We have some sessions that we did very infrequently throughout her time. Um when she came in a little bit, uh, when the weather was not so nice at certain points, and so we used that opportunity to teach her some stuff. That is where we begin. Then we start with the long lining and introducing the tack, and then we introduce a human. Uh, she's already had her teeth done. She came in a while back for that injury that I was talking about where she cut the back of her heel quite badly. I think she maybe just did it on a flint or something in the field. So horses, sometimes, they don't all have them, um, have something called wolf teeth and they grow in front of their molars, so their chewing teeth. So there's a gap, isn't there, in a horse's mouth. I say isn't there, as if you know, sorry. Their, their front teeth, and then they, they have a gap. They don't have canines that are as, like, in the row of teeth like we do. They do have canines. We call them tushes. I'm not sure why they're not called canines, but they are their canines. Um, and previously, they would have been more developed in, you know, years gone by because they would have been there like fighting teeth as such. But horses have a big gap. Now, whether they have evolved to have this gap so that we can put a bit in their mouth or whether evolutionary, this is just the way that it's worked. So they have their front incisors, then they have their canines or their tushes, which they don't necessarily all have. Some mares have tushes, some mares don't. Mostly geldings have them. Makes sense with the fighting thing, the what I was talking about before. But then their wolf teeth are these tiny little teeth that sit in front of their molars. They don't have to be tiny. Sometimes they're quite big. They have a big wobbly root and a big blood supply and a big nervous supply too. So they're very sensitive teeth. And they sit right where the bit sits. So as someone who has started many, many young horses, probably in its hundreds now, 
I make the decision that I don't want to start horses when they have those teeth in that place. I have had horses be very reactive in the past when I was backing horses for other people or when I was freelancing and I definitely didn't know as much as I know now. I would has I ha I was caught short when horses had a big reaction to the bit touching those teeth. It's a bit like if you had a wobbly tooth and you were brushing your teeth and you caught that wobbly tooth, it would make you do that. They're not like wobbly wobbly, you can't see them moving, but in the grand scheme of their teeth, you know, the, the root on a horse's tooth is like this, the root on a wolf tooth is about like that. So they don't have the same root system. So they end up very uh, loosely fitted in the horse's head as such. So I made the decision to have those taken out a while back. That means she's had a long time to heal, leaves a tiny little hole in their mouth. They have some sedation and some pain relief and then um, they just pop out. They are... It can be complicated, of course, like anything. I've had a horse before that had its wolf teeth taken out by someone who I don't personally use, and it had a big reaction, it had an infection, it was complicated. But my vet and my dentist between them, it's a very simple procedure, small, in like a small amount of movement, and the tooth just pops out. Anyway, I'm getting a bit involved in dentistry here because I'm very passionate about it, and it means a lot to me because I believe that horses should 100% be comfortable before we begin doing anything else. So we have got Didi coming in today and then we'll get started with some groundwork. My uh, saddler is actually here on Thursday, so that's great timing. So I might even get him to just suggest a few of my saddles that, that might fit her if she's comfortable and happy with me just kind of placing one on her back. Um, he may also be able to just take a template and tell me what width she is and then I'll be able to... Um, have a look for a saddle that's going to work for her and yeah I'm going to take you with me and show you Dee Dee and um, bring her in and yeah I'm looking forward to having her in I'm looking forward to having this opportunity to have a space in the training to um, get to do something lovely with her she will be backed and then depending on what the weather's doing my plan is for her to go back out in the field for the autumn sort of October November time hopefully till Christmas and then my intention was to bring her back in again and let her have the worst part of the winter in her stable where I will then be working her again because a she's very big and established she looks very grown she doesn't look weak and weedy and need a lot of time for growing but also when the weather is rubbish the less horses I have in the field the better because Miriam and Mud we're not friends so I pref would prefer to have less horses in the field so that those mares can have as much as they need in the field they're the older older horses and she can be in a stable and be pampered so yeah let's go I bought her a new head collar today this is to match the one that Blondie and Zora have because my plan is hopefully also for her to go in the field with Blondie and Zora in the daytime um so they can make a little herd anyway um I think that's everything there's so much else to update you on I have been really poorly, I've all sorts of things, Blondie is doing great, but we had a difficult thing, anyway, I, I'm gonna need to come and be more regular with you guys on here, because I know there's a lot of you, and I know that you love my videos, so I do want to keep you updated and do stuff, but I just feel like I'm drowning a bit at the moment, and... Um, if you'd like to support me and enable me to do more of this, then please, please head over to my online training platform, it is £5 a month, and you can A, support me and help me do all of this and do more of this, but B, gain a lot of knowledge. There are ride-along podcasts, groundwork videos, ridden videos, ridden training series where I show you um, how we would like to do something and then there's a podcast to go along with that that enables you to then learn with a coach in your ear in real time. Um, I've had amazing feedback on it. You can go on there and read some of the comments and see what people are saying about it all. And I hope to see some of you there. I will again attach the link here. Right, let's go find Dee Dee. So I've just done the list for today and look. It says Dee Dee. Oh my God. I'm so excited. We're just um, clip tidying the yard up and then we're gonna go and get her. <laughs> so we're actually very lucky to have lots of fields here so for reference the yard is like up there but we have um some more fields over a road so we've got a we've got both of us 
Meg is going to do the leading because I'm not feeling my best. Marching up a hill with a big three-year-old is not my thing right now. So, yeah, they're there, look. That's them up there. Oh. That's them up there. And that's the geldings. Um, so... Yeah, we've got a lot of space. But it just means that we have like field horses and then yard horses. So all the ones that are in stables get turned out on that side of the road. That side of the road. And then the retired ones or the young ones are on this side of the road. Yeah, that's how it works. Hello everyone. So we've got Kenko, Dee Dee, the biggest, Moses, her mum, and Nanetti. Where's your fly mask lady? Hmm? Hmm? Nanette, how old are you this year? Born in 1995. Old. 27? 27. So we've got 27, 3. I don't even know how old Mo is. 16? 17? And like 9. Oh, you always still a baby, really. You should be doing ridden stuff, but you didn't like it, did you? There she goes. Oh, sorry, everyone. She's pretty big these days. There's Rory. George's three-year-old, but he's quite immature still, so he's gonna stay in the field for a little while longer. Don't be too sad, Mosey. She's going to be a grown-up now. Poor Mose. She's probably a bit sad about this. And that's Tilly. You remember Tilly? George's jumpy horse, who's now retired. And this is lovely Vito. He's only a baby. He's only one year old, but he's come to be just here at grass and have some handling and yeah just grow up with these guys bless Dee Dee she um you see on her bum on the right side there's like a dip in her muscle she got kicked in the butt <laughs> just while she was in the field and it seems to have done something to the muscle so we're going to um do our best to help her build muscle. I spoke to the vet about it before and he said it's a lot about just building muscle and um, sort of not worrying about it too much essentially. And then if we are worried, you know, to look into it a bit more, but we'll use the LTS, the light therapy on it as well. So that'll be helpful to get it feeling good. Oh, Moses is shouting for her a bit. We made the decision to put them back together again six months ago or so because it made sense just to have one group of mares over here. Um, and it's been fine, but I do think Mo will be a bit uh, shouty for her. Dee Dee is not, as you can hear, not bothered, but Mo is. Right, got to go and navigate the road. Oh, scared, the puddle. <laughs> Good girl. Oh dear. Oh, we have a lot to learn, Dee Dee babes. Good girl. Head color fits. Yeah, looks nice, it's fancy. Fancy. Got our own one. Right, I'll go do the gates. I'll see you back up the yard, Meg. So I made it back in time to see Blondie and Zora go hooning over towards where Dee Dee is. You have to walk up between two fields. One side doesn't have any horse in it. The other side has Blondie and Zora in it. And they look very pleased to see her. I'm gonna go and see how she's getting on. <laughs> They're bloody idiots, those two. They're like, oh my God, a friend. Like, very exuberant and mildly disruptive. What are you doing? Oh, Jesus crikey. Goodness me, girls. You're meant to be grown-ups. Six, seven, not yet grown-ups, they say. Where's poor Dee Dee and Meg? Oh, poor Dee Dee's. She been okay? Yeah, fine. Oh, you've still got that piece of string. They're such plonkers. Blondie, this is Dee Dee, your new friend. She's like, <laughs> Come on. what is she doing? You think you're a racehorse? <laughs> Zora, Zora, well then, lovely flying changes. Are you? Anyway. This is not about you two. Goodbye. Fucking idiots. Idiots. 
Oh, good girl, Dee Dee. You is okay. Lawn mower. Thank you, girls. That's quite enough. Go back to eating grass. Come on, Deedles. You're going to go in your house now. Good girl. You is okay. You is okay. She's like, oh my God, I've never been here before. I only lived here and grew up here and... Oh. It's so exciting. Come on, let's go meet your new friends in the barn. Now oh, she's spotted a puddle. <laughs> Apparently puddles are a no-go. Good girl. She's very big, isn't she? She's so like, she's so broad. You wouldn't think she was a thoroughbred. No. Here we are in the stable that you've been in lots of times. Lovely, fresh, fluffy bed. Oh my goodness, so nervous. It's Stressed. We saw that mane out. Goodness me. Feral. Feral. Yeah, a bit stressful, isn't it? Being a big grown up and coming in. So, she's in her stable. I'm going to leave her to it for a bit. She's definitely a bit unsettled, to be expected. It's hard for them, you know. It's a lot when they're that age to just turn up in a stable. And her neighbour, Obi, is out in the field at the moment, so um, she's a bit shouty. But it's okay, I'm not too worried about it. She, when she's come in before, when she's had an abscess or when she cut her foot, um, she was a bit like this and she settled really quickly. So I'm just going to leave her to it for a bit um, and then we'll give her a nice brush later and sort her mane out and, yeah, give her a little pamper. We are going to ride now... Um, hence why I'm putting my chaps on. So I will come back and see you guys when I give her a little groom later, when she's a bit more relaxed. One more thing, uh, you know I was talking about supporting what I do here. Um, I don't mean like times are hard, but equally, if you would like to support what I do and equally be part of the team and have some Hackett Equine stuff of your own, I still have caps some jumpers loads of hoodies and t-shirts available on my website you can head over and i ship internationally they last like nobody's business i've had this jumper for a couple of years now i wear them all the time the zips are great they're nice and warm and soft underneath and they do stay like that even when you are as bad at doing the washing as i am so i highly recommend if you would like to support i do here if you'd like to support the horses dd blondies or uh, all of them then please do help me out a bit head over there also uh groundwork flags i have those too so anyway that's enough me touting my stuff but it would mean a lot to me and as i said i ship internationally so even if you are in america or South Africa, or anywhere in Europe, or anywhere that you wonderful people follow me from, you can still be part of the team. So, <gasps> we're just having a groom. She's much more settled. Her neighbour, Mr. Obi, is now back in his house. I will give you guys an Obi update at some point, but it's not a very happy one because he's not in work anymore. So, yeah. But, um, oh, it's okay. Just having some hay. So, um, I am just going to give her a groom and trim her mane. And, yeah, maybe I'll show you the before and the after. Seeing as videoing like this is really hard. So, this is her mane before. <laughs> it's lovely. Really smart. Here's slightly covered in mud i realize i didn't even have a pair of scissors i only trim manes i do not pull manes i believe it is unkind so um 
I don't even know where they are. The scissors. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, I don't pull manes. They did a study once, actually, on um, mane pulling. It was never actually published, which is really annoying because I'd like to quote it in this moment. But somebody did a study and basically, even if a horse doesn't look upset by having its mane trimmed, their heart rate spikes massively. So next time you're thinking about pulling your horse's mane, I wouldn't if I was you because they probably hate it even if they look like they're tolerating it. Um, yes, yes, I'm coming to cut your mane. Yes. So uh, I want to mention something else. So Dee Dee, being a thoroughbred, hasn't had great like hoof quality. It's like they're just not very strong. And, you know, I believe that um, hoof quality and strength, goodness me, she's quite in your face, isn't she? Uh, comes from within. So it comes from like good health. So I want to talk about what I'm going to be feeding Dee Dee now that she is in. She's just been having grass up until now, but she is going to be fed the Equa Diet, which is a natural based feed. It's what I feed everything now. It's grass and omega. That's it. You can look it up. I'll put it here. I'll do maybe a do an updated feeding vlog, but it's quite simplistic these days because I just feed one thing. So it's fat and fiber, as I have been banging on about for a long time. Um, and then I feed salt, so she'll get 30 grams of Himalayan pink salt every day. This is important for vitamin, vitamins and minerals. And then I'm also going to be feeding her a hoof supplement. Um, it's called the Hoof Growth from Premier Performance. Uh, we fed it to her last winter and she had been really, really prone to abscesses. And uh, we started feeding it to her before the, the before the winter she had one abscess all winter and actually it was because she had a cut on her coronet band that tracked down through the hoof so we are definitely going to be feeding her that again um i have a discount code for those guys if you would like it it'll be down here and probably on the screen now if i'm being clever right let's sort this mane out You look so beautiful. We're gonna go and have to have a photo shoot. Hmm, Dee Dee Babes, sweet girl. I just need to do her feet. And then it's time for lunch for all of us. We've actually got the Saddler coming as well to see Zora and a couple of the others. So, um, yeah, but also we're having a pizza for lunch because it is rainy rubbish so we're I'm treating the girls to a pizza for lunch which I do every now and then right where's that hoof pick oh my goodness oh my goodness you're very very in the face aren't you you're very in my face yes are you my mate are you are you lovely do you like kisses and cuddles and stuff Funny, she's the first, obviously, the first horse that I will be solely responsible for from a foal until a grown up. And, um, Didi, could you stop banging me on the head, please? Thank you very much. Hurts a bit, monkey. Uh, so it's really interesting being kind of responsible for it, but also like seeing it because she's just, well, very, very friendly. Very itchy chin, apparently. And it's nice because often three-year-olds having just been out, which she has been, she's not been handled loads. I mean, we trim their feet every five weeks. She's been in and out for various injuries and abscesses and all the rest of it. But, you know, she's not had training as such, loads of, a little bit. And the difference in her is just enormous. Like nothing is a problem. Like bringing her in wasn't really a problem. She's been a bit stressed about the change, but it's not like she can't settle. It's really interesting veiny system on the side of her face. I've always worried about it. Vet said it's nothing to be worried about. But yeah, I'm just interested to see how it is backing one that I have handled from a foal, known from a foal, 
I'd be interested if she's problematic. I really hope not. So that is pretty much all I'm going to do with Dee Dee today. Just let her chill in her stable. Uh, let her settle in. She's going to go in the field with Blondie and Zora tomorrow, as I mentioned earlier. So, yeah, I will uh, take you along on this journey as best I can. I really struggle with, like... <laughs> filming videos and then getting around to editing them and putting them on the internet at appropriate moments that actually make sense in the timeline of life because otherwise I film them and then by the time I get around to editing them and posting them it's been like a long time and they don't make sense anymore so yeah if you would like to uh, keep up with more day-to-day -day goings on please do follow me on Instagram Miri Hackett um, and yeah I might finish this video here I'm just gonna get these lovely girls in now. It's a bit rainy and as I said, Zora's got the saddler. So yeah, maybe next video will be an update on this lovely lady who is pretty different these days. Aren't you? Aren't you? You're a lovely girl, aren't you? This is what she's like to catch these days rather than the previous where she just like ran the opposite direction. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. And I will keep you updated on Dee Dee's process, progress, process. And I'll see you for next time. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.